Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video about um, feelings of abandonment when you have benzo illness, um, psychiatric drug withdrawal illness, and potentially like a sick building syndrome for some of us who just stay sick and sick for years and years on end. Um, but just so you know, you can definitely become sick from a psychiatric medication and then recover in six months to a year. It happens all the time. And it's not like totally uncommon that if you end up in a um, support group after you're off of all psychiatric medications, it's not like wildly uncommon for you to have a protracted injury. So both of these things are realities. And, you know, the reason I'm speaking to my experience is because it's just one experience and it's definitely it it's definitely wor worth noting that your environment is incredibly important in your healing process. <laughs> But it's also when you have bandwidth to, to pursue that and geek out on it. And it's very difficult because we have limited uh, cognition to do that. But anyway, I wanted to do a video today about this concept of abandonment. Because this, I think, is like one of the most, um, you know, suicidality and suicide provoking um, sort of neuro emotion realities. And so let's start off with saying... You can definitely, before you even get injured, have a chaotic relationship with your family members, right? Like people have some like narcissism in their families or they have like, you know, really aggressive and strict and demanding parents or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you can be pretty close to health. So let's say that this is, we'll say this is health, right? And we'll also say that this is your, your family, you know, your family and friends, um, you know, bubble of togetherness, let's put it, right? I'll do a circle for health and I'll say that you can be, you know, pretty close to health, like you're here, right? And for people who have extreme injuries from psychiatric medications, they tend to like migrate pretty far from health. Um, and for people who have sick building, like myself, you know, you can continue to migrate if... You have difficulty uh, detoxing uh, mycotoxins and biotoxins um, or biotoxins in general. But, you know, even if you're here or you're here, right, you can have like a chaotic togetherness with your family, you know, your family or your friends. We'll put it just whatever your sense of family is, right? Let's say, you know, your people are in here and even if you're healthy, you can feel like you're here, right? But it's important to, to know that as a part of neuroemotion and psychiatric drug withdrawal, basically distorted reality emotion, it, it distorts this understanding. So let's say in the most ideal scenario, you know, you find your, well, in an ideal scenario as a sick person, you find yourself somewhere outside of here. And before you were sick, you felt like you were in your unit, right? Your people had your back, you were all on the same page, everybody got you. What benzo, benzo brain, benzo brain, and really a state of extreme toxicity in the body, and some propose, some propose an injury to the nerves, I more so tend to believe that that's definitely a combination of potentially injury to the nerves but also a toxic load injury okay who knows like we don't really know but what benzo brain tries to convince you of which is an absolute distortion of reality even if let's say you felt like you were here and your family wasn't perfect and you felt like you were kind of on the outskirts what benzo brain convinces you of is that once you leave health that you are actually here and all of these people have left you. And this is the visual that the brain like gives you, that you are actually in the bubble. I mean, because it's sort of like a, it's sort of like the main, it's a little bit of like the main character syndrome, but on crack, right? So you're in the bubble, but all your family has abandoned you and they're here. Now, I'm not saying that this can't happen, even when you're in perfect health, when you're in perfect health, 
like that your family can't be have some narcissists or some problematic people so but and only you really know that but I think like thinking back to who you were before you were you know you 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 probably had some health issues before the benzo incident um but when you were functional you know if you can see it, it like that it was this way before then that's different what i'm talking about is when you sensed that you were together with your family somewhat at least for the most part or you felt like you were pretty close and then you stepped outside of health and it now feels like this what i'm proposing to you is that this is a distortion of reality in fact what I believe has actually happened is that your family is all here waiting for you and that you have, in fact, left. And what the brain lies to you and tells you is the truth is that these people, they need to come to you and be in your reality with you. They've left you. They've abandoned you. I'm again, I'm not saying you can't have a problematic grandfather or a problematic parent or a problematic sibling. But if you didn't notice that before your injury and these people were very supportive and loving and kind and really a huge component of this is intellectual. Can can they think for themselves? Are they critical thinkers? Can they think outside the box? If they were like that before, the reality is is that you have actually left you have changed, you have gone somewhere else, and they are waiting for you to come back. And the brain tells you that this is the healthy thing, that that the brain tells you you're here and these people are far away. But part of it is also that the brain is like, these people need to come meet you in hell. They need to find you, need to, they need to rescue you, they need to save you, they need to be on your the same page, they need to be in the same program. They absolutely cannot do that. But the brain will distort that they should, that they can, that they will, that they need to save you. They absolutely, they cannot know more about your situation than you do. And if they're loving, they're doing their best. They're preserving, right? They're keeping the lights on. I've, I've written, I've actually written poetry about this, like where I felt very abandoned. And the poetry was very much so steeped in distortion, like thought distortion. But you have to know that these people, if they showed love before and they're decent people, you know, like, look at the history before the benzo injury. Were they decent? Were they kind? Were they intellectual? Were they thinkers? If they were those things before. And they're not saying, like, you're a drug addict. Like, you need to get out of the house. You're a drug addict. You know, they're not, like, sort of parochial in their thinking or small in their thinking or, like, oversimplistic in their thinking. These people, guaranteed, are just waiting for you to come back. They don't know what else to do. And they certainly cannot pull a rabbit out of a hat if you can't. If you're in it and you can't figure out how to get out, they certainly cannot help you figure it out. That the fact that they are maintaining here is actually the greatest act of love that they can humanly do for you is to keep the lights on, is to keep going, is to keep working, is to keep functioning so that you have a roof over your head and some support. Now, Obviously, there are people who do not have this dynamic and it's very evident that these people have like some narcissistic leanings or they've abandoned you or left you. I'm not saying that isn't real. The only thing I'm speaking to here is if you can think to before the injury how these people were. You also have to imagine this too. Like before I got injured, I remember as an example, my friend's mom passed away in high school and I was so self-conscious about how to respond to that tragedy like I remember I couldn't even go and knock on my friend's door I left a note I was so fucking awkward in myself and yes I was in high school and I cut myself slack I cut myself slack I would cut myself slack for doing it now because people are very awkward around tragedy and they're awkward around things they don't understand and they're awkward about extreme illness they're awkward about extreme psychiatric upheaval in a human being that's been relatively stable and normal before they don't know how to step around that so you know it can very easily seem like these people in their behavior are acting avoidant or weird or not making eye contact or being like cruel when in fact they are just 
supremely awkward, supremely awkward in their ability to know what to do to help you or to not trigger you further or to not create more upheaval for you. That is what is usually the reality. So sorry my drawings are all crazy, but I hope this is helpful. Like, yes, I realize this looks like some kind of a uh, graph of like a uh, different phases of a cell or something but like the reality is like more I would say more often than not you have left the bubble and you've gone somewhere else and the stuff you see here is some crazy shit what's really sad and tragic is that what happens here often is like there's a there's a sense of self-righteousness around it. I know the truth. I've figured things out. I have the light, the way that now there is some there is some like stuff you figure out here when you've been supremely injured by a industry that's supposed to help people theoretically. Yeah, you do figure out some stuff here, but also what's mixed into this, leaving the bubble, is a lot of thought distortion, a lot of misperception misconception misperception of reality a lot of delusion um, extreme neuro emotion and hypersensitivity like the neighbor looks at you the wrong way and oh my god they're the devil incarnate um i i i really truly believed several of my neighbors were ser serial killers for like years I believed it and I didn't believe it it was like some part of me knew that it was a thought distortion and some part of me was like this is a thousand percent real like that guy at the end of the block he his smile is too is too good it's too he's just a little too friendly right it was just like complete paranoia delusion and then what's really scary is there can be a lot of self-righteousness and when you have those two in combination oh that's a spooky combination but anyway I really hope this helps somebody because what in fact is more often the truth is that you have left the bubble. You've gone somewhere else. And there can be some truth bombs there, but overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly there is a ton of trauma and thought distortion and neuroemotion and delusion. And like, it's just lucky that it honestly is just lucky these people are not calling like the, 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 the loony bin wagon on you in the modern era. Um, for all of the crazy behavior that happens here. So I hope this helps somebody. I promise you more often than not, even if, like I said, even if you felt like you were kind of always on the outskirts of your family and, you know, they weren't perfect people, but they mean well and they love you and they're, they have their human folly, but overwhelmingly you sense characteristics of kindness, compassion, thoughtfulness, like forgiveness, right? If you sense these things before, overwhelmingly, it's you who has left the bubble, not your family who has abandoned you. Unless you sense that long before this happened. That's my, this is my, you know, it's, 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 it's something I feel very strongly is the case. And, um, and I hope it is soothing and something you can play on repeat to remind yourself that, in fact, you have left and you will most likely inch your way back to the bubble and come back to your people. And if they're good people, they'll be waiting there for you and you'll be very lucky to have them.